at the outset i wish to thank the organizing committee of diabetes india for giving me this opportunity and to discuss the insulin up titration versus intensification not exactly intensification but basically what should we do because like we know that whenever it comes to the insulin therapy there is a strong energy in the patient's mind it's very difficult to convince a patient for insulin therapy or on the top of that once you have started he is not willing to increase the dose doctor sahab dose bada do ke garam nahi karega nuksan nahi kar jayega aisa to nahi raat mein low ho jayegi so there is so much here say in his mind what to do what not to do increase the dose or fir ek bar doctor sahab pichli bar to aapne bola tha ek hi bar lagana hai ab aap keh rahe ho teen bar lagana hai ab aap kehte ho do bar lagana hai to fir 5 saal baad to koi insulin bhi kaam nahi karega so there are multiple things which comes in the patient's mind so like what should ideally be the advice because what we see in practice when you start a insulin therapy to a patient and you start with 10 units of basal insulin he comes after 2 months and 3 months doctor sahab aapne bhai thi insulin laga lo maine laga bhi liya sugar aaj bhi 250 hai the reason is that he is not uptight because he was he is we have shown him we have educated him but he come to follow up after 2 months and he continue with the same insulin dose so that is the reason that patients are they, they lose faith on insulin because the doctor sahab said to goli theek thi पहले ठीक चल रहा था मेरा बंद ही कर दो सो विल बी डिस्कसिंग दैट एंड वी नो दैट देयर इज इंक्रीजिंग बटन ऑफ डायबिटीज ये फुल व्यू नहीं होगा सो फुल व्यू कर दो सो द द प्रेवलेंस ऑफ इसको फुल व्यू कर दो ना बहुत साइड फोटो कर दो द प्रेवलेंस ऑफ डायबिटीज इज इंक्रीजिंग डे इन डे आउट एंड इंडिया इज होम टू ऑलमोस्ट अराउंड 70 मिलियन डायबिटिक्स एंड दिस नंबर इज जस्ट द पब्लिश डेटा बट आई एम श्योर यू ऑल विल एग्री द नंबर इज मच मच हायर देन दैट and as we know that the data from the icm are no yes pe chala gaya sorry for this so and we know the data that out of one diagnose you have two undiagnosed patients so like the prevalence of diabetes the number of the people affected from diabetes is much much higher in almost all the conferences and even a single person reduction so the, the results from the ubds mandate the treatment of type 2 diabetes should be aggressive from the very first day to avoid the legacy effect to avoid the glucose memory effect so and if you see the post hoc analysis of this data from the ubds as a long term follow which has shown that the, in spite of the, the similar glucose but the patients who are well controlled in the initial arm they in the intensive arm they have a lesser uh, cardiovascular morbidity and mortality so that means the initial initial period is a golden period which we called as a glucose memory of the legacy effect so like we should aggressively like as we see in the mi or as we see in the coronary artery disease there is a golden hour so i feel that there is a golden period in the in the initially 3 to 5 years in the life of a diabetic patient when we can act aggressively we can control it and we can prevent the complication in the later life so and what can be done we know that the a1c reduction of the oral oral anti diabetic somewhere it is 0.8 to 1.5 from the different oral anti diabetics but the insulin is the therapy which can provide you any amount of the a1c reduction and if we can study we can have this strategy for the insulin therapy so if the goal is to improve fpg if suppose there are patients who are having more of fpg we should go for a long acting insulin logs if the goal is ppg we can add rapid acting insulins if the goal is both ppg and fpg so we should go along with the oad we can add either basal or a premix and to achieve the optimal glycemic control both ppg and fpg should be targeted so depending on the what are the patient's glycemic profile we can choose either patient is fit for the basal therapy or patient is fit for the basal plus therapy or basal bolus therapy but i am sure you'll all agree in patients of type 2 diabetes it's very difficult to convince a patient for a basal bolus therapy from the very first it's very easy like 
बिकॉज ऑफ द बीसल थेरेपी वेन यू आज अ पेशेंट एक बार लगाना है रात को ही लगाना है अच्छा ठीक है डॉक्टर साहब सोचते हैं घर जाके बात करेंगे बट वेन यू से तीन बार लगाना तीन बार लगाना है मतलब ही नहीं है वो सबसे पहले पैथी बदल देगा डॉक्टर बदल देगा किसी और को चला जाएगा सो दिस इज दिस इज दिनरियो सो यस वी कैन वर्क विद दी विद दी ओ एडी प्लस बेसल थेरेपी एंड इफ यू सी द प्रोफाइल ऑफ द इंसुलिन थेरेपीज वी नो दैट दिस इज दी विद प्रीमिक्स सो लाइक दीज आर दी पोस्ट प्राइनल ग्लूकोज विच कैन बी जस्ट टेकन केयर बाय द प्रीमिक्स बट दी बेसल विल टेक ओनली ऑफ दिस पार्ट सो लाइक स्टिल यू हैव दी दिस इज अनकवर्ड एंड वेन इट कम्स टू दी बेसल बोलस यस दिस इज द आइडियल बेस्ट इंसुलिन थेरेपी फॉर ऑल पेशेंट्स बी टाइप वन बी वन फॉर टाइप टू इफ यू वॉन्ट अ गुड एग्रेसिव कंट्रोल सो लाइक वी शुड गो फॉर अ बेसल बोलस रेजीम बट इट्स डिफिकल्ट टू कन्विंस अ पेशेंट फॉर थ्री टाइम्स बोलस प्लस अ बेसल दैट इज अ फोर टाइम्स इंसुलिन थेरेपी और दी एम डी पी सो विच पेशेंट शुड बी ऑफर्ड अ प्रीमिक्स वर्सेज बेसल बोलस यस प्रीमिक्स यूजली पेशेंट प्रेफरेंसेज दो बार लगाने से काम चल जाएगा ठीक है एंड ओल्डर एज पेशेंट the patients who need assistance with injection many of the patient they say i can't take insulin i have a phobia with insulin therapy main to kisi ko bula lunga ghar mein dekhta hu koi laga dega bachche to saath rehte nahi hai so there are multiple things when you it's not only the science when you practice in the clinical in your clinical clinics it's all together different science is same thing but the patient's acceptance patient preference because it's just not just a therapy of one day or two days five days it has to be a persistent it has to be a chronic therapy so like it has to be uh, the uh, you need consent to the patient also and see the uh, the acceptance basal plus yes taiwan young age highly motivated active lifestyle and high variability in eating habits so what to do initiating insulin is not enough that i was saying titrate titrate and titrate until unless you are titrating the insulin therapy quite well you will not achieve the targets you will not achieve the patient's fate so just to have a discussion like let's like just say this is a patient is a typical type diabetic patient 56 year old 80 years diabetic with numbness lower extremities blurring of vision and the treatment is on su's metformin so like all four five therapies with statins And still, the A1C is 8.9, FPG is 198, 250. I'm sure you all must be seeing such type of patient day in day out. And if you convince these patient, if you ask these patient to take a insulin therapy, they will they'll say okay, thi thi kya? Sochta hu, ek goli aur bada do. I will do this. I will start with a little bit. I will do a little bit. I will do a little bit. But still, there are multiple things. So, like if you see, the first visit patient was started on the basal therapy at 10 units. The first visit, the 10 units. At the second visit after month, still the patient is on 10 units. A1C is 8.9 at the time of initiation. And fasting is 198. At after one month, even the fasting is 178. PBG is almost similar, 250 to 200. That means even after one month, patient started with insulin therapy, he has not yet achieved the any 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 good control in the fasting and PBG. That means the dose titration was not proper. So the dose of the basal insulin started with 10 units. Still, the patient is taking 10 units after one month. So like patient has to be educated about the titration of the dose. Then only you can achieve the good glycemic control. So It is like why we need up titration. Eighty-six percent of type two diabetic patients using insulin plus OADs, and seventy-nine point three percent patients using only insulin are not a target. So like it's not only just starting insulin will achieve the target. It is dose titration. It's education. It's awareness. Because in spite of the insulin therapy, almost around eighty percent patients with the OAD or without OAD are not at the target. So that means there are multiple reasons like the pro progression of the disease. uh patient not following a lifestyle associated with comorbidities but still titration is very important so if you need a adequate dose titration this will help achieving the target a1c so the a1c uh, like the the uh, either patients on basal or even the basal plus we should have a good dose titration and there are multiple plethora of insulins which are available uh, like the basal insulin pre mix insulin like biphasic co formulations prandial insulins so from that which one to use and how to titrate so what does the guideline says as ada recommends once the basal insulin therapy is initiated ideally 8 to 10 units there are multiple formulations multiple multiple suggestions which are given but my clinical experience of last 25 years that we should go slow start with a lower dose ask for to the patient to the up titrate because like by any chance if the patient develops one episode of hypoglycemia he'll have a fear life long he'll never initiate insulin therapy so it's better to go slow start with a lower 8 to 10 units of insulin and then up titrate the dose maybe after every third day fourth day don't rush so once the basal insulin therapy is initiated you should go for up titration intensification of insulin treatment can be done by adding doses of prandial or basal insulin like suppose the patient started with the basal insulin therapy patient has controlled fasting now fasting is normal but yes still the ppg is not under control then you can go for a basal plus along with the oads alternatively a patient on basal in whom The additional prandial coverage is desired. Regimen can be converted to basal plus. 
so this is this is just the strategy which is uh, advice like like we started with the chain unit or the easy chain unit and if the patient comes with the fasting comes in the range of 8 to 130 if you can continue with the same dose but if still the fasting is more so like we can ask the patient to does just do two times in a week titrate the dose increase the dose maybe by two units every third day every fourth day depending on the patient's preference patient kitna sugar karne ko taiyar hai kitna oh sorry so depending on that we can we can advise the patient for up titration and down titration so in that patient like if suppose the patient has been educated uh, educated adequately patient started with 10 units at third visit at 3 months patient was on 22 units and just see the fasting the patient started from 198 of the fasting now at 112 with 252 of ppg it is 138 and the a1c 7 so that means it's all the titration of the dose which has to be educated properly to the patient and even it's it's like if you see the long term beneficiary or the sustainability like even after the 2 years the a1c from 8.9 to 27 then again patient was not followed up properly again the patient had a rise in a1c so this is the usual journey when patient comes to the normal when patient comes to the a1c of 7 fasting pp normal he feel up to theek hi ho gaya sab badhiya chal raha hai theek hai doctor sab zarurat kya hai bar bar doctor ko paise dene ki so wo 3 mahine 4 mahine mein like until as our in our country the basically is still the diabetic patient they come from the symptom based if they have symptom doctor sab aap hi keh rahe ho sugar zyada mujhe to koi takleef hai nahi theek hi lag raha hai mujhe koi dikkat hi nahi hai so when they develop symptoms they come to the treatment they come for a follow up so like the patient again they he continued with the same dose and now again having the a1c of 8 it this is the usual the usual uh, journey we see in our patient the reason was that patient was not having a good postprandial control and patient has to be switched over like period of one year or two years to the basal plus or like change in the oids so the titration what titration or what algorithm we should follow the easy titration should be like safe and easy so safe that it should not have a hypoglycemic risk and the weight gain easy the titration should be easy well patient if like you ask a patient to take two times or three times he say doctor main to naukri pe jata hu insulin leke kahan jaunga so like it should be fitting into his routine lifestyle so it should be easy also so we can have the dose adaptation every day there are multiple trials which have shown that how to titrate the dose from the inside you have a every day from Atl atlantis and automatics it like at every third day every so every week it depends it's it's there is nothing black and white there is nothing enforced guideline that you should do in this way this depends between you it is all clinical clinician's perspective that what is the acceptance of the patient how frequently he is willing to do the blood sugar how frequently he is willing to titrate and how much availability of the monitoring because like we have to avoid hypoglycemia so when to stop titrating basal insulin and prandial so like once you started a patient of type 2 diabetes with oral antidiabetics we have up titrated and you have achieved a good glycemic control but is still the patient's a1c is not controlled now the time has come so what should be the upper limit ideally it recommendation is 0.5 units per kg body weight of the basal insulin so if the patient has not yet achieved or even if the patient has achieved the fpg but base uh, the prandials is not yet controlled so patient should be either added for the basal plus so the basal plus bolus insulin therapy and and depending on your your uh, so the basal insulin you started with the like 10 units then increasing the dose you have achieved the target and there is of there is a hypo we should understand the risk of hypo and if the patient is having hypo we should reduce the dose so if the patient is not considered uh, like if the patient is not uh, at the so if not controlled after fpg's target is achieved or you have reached a dose of 0.5 units per kg body treat ppg excessions with a meal time insulin or we can go for a glp1 ra so along with the basal adjust increase the dose by 10 to 15% like we have discussed for the basal and if the dose is higher we can divide the current basal dose in 2/3 in the am or 1/3 or this way or like we can go for a prandial plus basal or even we can think of a premix if the patient feel feel that he will not take uh, multiple insulin therapy and uh, we can even go for a basal bolus like so two or three base uh, bolus along with the basal so once we have achieved up titrated a dose of basal to a maximum or the fasting is achieved or the patient develops night time hypoglycemia now it is the time not for intensifying that therapy but going for a basal plus therapy so when to move from basal plus to basal plus uh, in patients like type 1 yes we know in advanced stage of type 2 diabetes, uh, diabetes when insulin deficiency worsens newly diagnosed patient with severe hyperglycemia and patients on basal plus therapy who developed contraindication to the oral drugs is the time to switch to the basal plus so the same patient when he had 
this A1C of 8, again we started with the BCL plus and then we have a 126 of 166. So, that continuing of OADs, this is always ask patients like when you start a patient on insulin therapy, you have to take a So, do you have to take a So, what is the benefit insulin? You have to eat a bowl. You have to eat a bowl. So, there are multiple questions which has to be answered, which has to be dealt then and there. Yes, but as per science, yes, we can continue with the metformin, should be continued with all types of insulin with the type 2 diabetics. Glatozone should ideally be avoided or like if you have a fear of the uh, weight gain in basal insulin regimes, all OADs, glitazones, it's not very uh, clear, but yes, premix, basal plus prandial or prandial insulin regimes, we should watch for as, uh, hypoglycemia because the SUs may contribute to hypoglycemia along with the insulin therapy. Otherwise, you can, so what are the practical recommendations? If the above A1C add basal insulin after the OAD patient is not yet controlled, start with the basal or the bedtime NPH of the patient can't afford the basal, but now you have the uh, affordable basals. Set FPG targets, so fix fasting first, once the FPG is fine and if the patient is, uh, uh, target A1C is achieved, continue with the uptitration of the basal. If the fasting is controlled, A1C is not yet achieved, but the PPG is still high, definitely you need to add a basal plus. This is, this is the guidelines which says, be it from ADA 2022, if the A1C is target, again the same which is uh, add prandial, if the A1C is in <coughs> above the target, we can, this is a very busy slide, it's not visible from there, but you can have, uh, you can think of adding a GLP-1 RA or you can think of adding basal bolus. This is again from the ACE, start basal, same, the A1C is uh, like less than 8, these are the, that's just the clinical guidelines. Sir. I'll just summarizing, last slides. So this is the RSGI ESI recommendations, dual therapy, which is a patient-centric approach. If glucose control targets are not achieved, add ASU or glitazone or gliflozin and then the triple therapy, but we should think of uh, adding insulin before going to the third drug, fourth drug or adding on to the drugs. So to summarize, uh, we know that the type 2 diabetes has a progressive nature of uh, the disease. The pathogenesis goes on increasing and at one point of time and initially we used to think that the is just insulin resistance, but we know that uh, now it is the mixed effect. So the many of the patient, majority of the patient, they come to us, they need insulin therapy even from the very, very early days, even the younger type of diabetics. And so insulin regime should be selected to suit the patient's clinical profile, patient's lifestyle and his uh, acceptance to the therapy. Titration remains a challenge because like many of the patients, they start with the same dose, they continue with the same dose for two, three months and they come to for the follow-up after two, three months. So we should be very clear that patient should be well educated about the titration. In, do the titration by two units every third day. Once you achieve the maximum dose of the uh, basal or you have achieved the PG but not PPG or the A1C target, we should think of going for a basal bolus. And the cost of therapy and SMBG should be considered because like patient has to be educated. When you start a patient in therapy, sugar check kaise karenge, meter to hai nahi. So this is also many, many of times a concern in the patient's mind. Thank you very much for the patient's hearing.